Hello and welcome to this tutorial for Cinelera CV where I'm going to talk about making the most out of the title effect and doing some fancy animated tricks with it. Um, as some of my other tutorials, this isn't so much about achieving a specific effect as understanding how to use the title effect in conjunction with other effects and other tracks to um, be able to, to do your own work with it, but I will show you uh, one of my personal favourite uses for it. So the first thing you want to do is import uh, two video tracks with the same clip on each track. I'm going to turn off the top track by pressing this green triangle so we can't see it, because we'll want to see what's on the lower track, and drag the title onto the lower track. As you see, I've set it up already. You can have a look. This is fairly self-explanatory. Um, I've just got it saying title. I've made it bright green. Let me show you that is the color section here because we're going to mask it out as if it's green screen and that's a very bright neon colour to use. You could in theory use a different one, doesn't matter. Uh, so that's the next thing we're going to do. Go to the chroma key, just the regular chroma key, not HSV, is probably easier for this. Um, and to show you what I did, if I move this down, first thing you want to do is in the compositor hit this, the colour picker here, so that's highlighted, then click on the color. Then click use color picker. So for instance if I were to click here and use color picker it becomes gray. So I click here, use color picker, it becomes green. The threshold is how much green. So as you can see because it's so bright you can just move it straight up. The slope basically creates a blurred edge but you won't need that because this is an extremely simple use of the chroma key. So just use the color picker, move the threshold up half a step or so. The next thing you want to do is find the reroute effect and drop that on. In the reroute effect you want to make sure that target track top operation alpha replace. At this point I need to explain to you a little bit about what an alpha track is um, and, and what that means. Basically it's, it's uh, transparency so um, what I've done now with that chroma key has made a transparent section. It's black because there's no track beneath it, but I've, I've basically cut that out. This is like a, a hole in the track, and that is that exists on the alpha layer. So by rerouting that alpha layer to a different track, I am effectively saying this mask here, these holes that I've cut out of this track, I want them to also be cut out of another track. This is also where I have to explain to you about shared effects. So if we go turn the second track back on. As you can see suddenly it disappears because we're now looking at track video track 2 not video track 1. Right click, attach effect. Now as you'll see you have all the different effects that you can add to it. You also have shared effects. If you choose a shared effect that is not designed to be used across two tracks it will just share the same keyframes. It will just sort of apply it at the same level. But a track like reroute is intend uh, the effect like reroute is intended to be used across two tracks. So double click on it and as you can see, it says video 1 colon reroute because it's rerouting from video 1. And as you can also see, the mask has appeared here. The next thing you want to do is choose the invert video effect and drop that on. As you can see, it's disappeared. That's because we've flipped that mask. Hello, everyone. Uh, I just forgot, because I'm awesome like that, to give you a very important piece of information, so I'm just swooping in here to tell you now. When you drop your invert video effect uh, you need to look at it and you need to make sure that a, the A channel and only the A channel is inverted, that is the alpha channel. Do not, I repeat, do not invert the rest of them or you will end up getting something very very strange looking. Um, so only the A channel needs to be inverted for this effect. Over and out. As you can see, it's disappeared. That's because we've flipped that mask. Um, so in effect, on the top track, we have nothing but that title cut out, and on the bottom track, we have everything but that title cut out, and they, they mesh together. I appreciate that's a little bit difficult to understand, so the easiest way I have to visually demonstrate it is to temporarily add another track. So video, add track. So what I want to do is drop a just some red onto there and then I'm going to move this track down tracks move tracks down and suddenly this this becomes a little clearer so at the moment
this is video track 2, that's all of it there is, are these letters. If I turn the invert video off, it's the other way around and there are holes showing down to the red track beneath it. So I'm going to delete that. So the next thing to note, let me delete that track for a second because it will come back in a minute as you'll see. If I add effects to this top track, for example if I add gamma, you can suddenly see the title because I'm only adding the effect to the top track and I'm only adding the effect to this part of the mask. And for some effects this is all you'll need to do, however if you do anything that affects the alpha channel that I was talking about, for instance if I were to add a blur effect and I were to blur the alpha channel, i.e. the edges of that mask, you start seeing the green from underneath because we're, we're blurring it out and you know you probably don't want it to be a lurid green or whatever color you chose to mask out on. So the way we get around that is to attach this. Oh, I didn't mean to detach the gamma, let me add that back. Is to go back to adding three tracks and again we're gonna move that track down. Um, and to paste yet another identical copy of the clip with absolutely no effects on it whatsoever. So now, when I add that blur effect again, and I blur the alpha, it's, it's a much smoother blur. We're not getting that green underneath. So effectively what we're doing is we are creating a mask on track one using a bright green color we are rerouting that mask onto track 2 at the top and then we're flipping that mask and dropping it down onto track 3. This means that once you've got this basic setup you can drop any effects that you want onto track 1 and it will only affect the writing and the words and it will treat it like its own separate object on top of track 2. Um, So I'm going to talk a little bit about the way you can use this to, to make fun effects. The first thing is just to be aware, if you're ever unhappy with how blurry your writing gets, a very easy thing to do is to drop a title effect onto the second track and simply change the colour to something uh, perhaps a little bit less offensive, <laughs> say white. And as you can see, um, that already is, is kind of interesting. Um, it's always just worth remembering that you can, you know, it gives us almost a glowing effect if you just use the blur, which is partly translucent. So it's always worth remembering that you can add that uh, title again and change the colour onto the middle track. But for this case, uh, for this effect, I'm not actually going to do that. I'm going to detach that entirely. What I am going to do is keyframe the gamma. So at the start, I'm going to fade it down so that it's not particularly clear and I'm going to choose a similar keyframe uh, level at the end and in the center I'm going to really brighten that up something huge really bright there there we go the next effect I'm going to drop onto it is a zoom blur and again I'm going to keyframe this so at the start I'm going to set the zoom X all the way down there see if we want to go up or down. The X and the Y axis just kind of as you can see affect where the zoom is. I'm happy with about that. The radius, the, 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 the bigger it is the the less clear so we'll go maybe maybe that much. And again actually I want that to start from the other direction. With the steps this is um, again you should experiment but as you can see if, if we go down very low you can sort of see the, multiple, the, the duplication, so I'm going to move it all the way up to the end because I want it to look smooth. Um, again, only choose the alpha because we're blurring the mask. And then at the far end, leave the settings, but I will swing it all the way to the other direction along the X horizontal axis. Now, if I play this, you get a kind of uh, fading, bright three-dimensional effect. I'll play that again. Which I think looks pretty cool. 
Um, but again, this is, this is the basis for all sorts of experimentations that you may wish to make on your own. Before I finish, I do want to talk a little bit about this inversion here that I've, I've dropped on and the times at which you may wish to do something else instead. I'm going to detach all of the effects because um, as I showed you earlier with the red clip, this invert video is the difference between having this top track be like this with a hole where the words are or being nothing but the words and a hole all the way, and, and, and black transparent space all the way around the words. So when we have it inverted, we're, uh, we're dropping effects onto the top track and we are manipulating that title. So for example, if I were to drop... Um, let's put the gamma back on because it's a good way of, of being able to see it. And then if I were to drop a, a whirl effect onto it, it actually, as you can see, starts... Oh, excuse me, I haven't turned that on, that's why you can... It starts uh, warping the title and moving it around. Um, you know, the, the word itself is being treated as an object. However, if I detach that, and detach the gamma, and I turn the invert video off, first of all we have to add the effects to video track 3, because um, this just has a giant title-shaped hole, and so if we drop the gamma onto the top track, it makes everything else around it bright, you see? But So we, we have to drop the gamma onto this track to get the same effect. Um, and when we whirl this time, you can't see it as clearly, because if we turn that top track off, you can see we're, we're warping the entirety of this track here, and we turn this on, title just gives us a window down to the, sh to the clip beneath. So that's the difference between whether or not you choose, you choose to, to add that inversion or not. Um, my feeling is that if you want to do, that a lot of the more interesting effects have the inversion on because you can treat the title as an object, but there are some effects uh, that work better if, if you add the effect, uh, the effect to, the, to the track beneath it, it depends. Um, and it depends on, on what, you, what you want out of, your, out of your title sequence. But that's, that's that tutorial finished for the moment and thank you very much for watching.